Alex. This is Code Along with Alex, and today we're going to configure default memory requests and limits for a namespace. Also, we're going to have some barks in the background because my dog Tolula is feeling very, very sassy. Shout out to Bortooth Tattoo for the sick hat with old English lettering. I dig it. They do awesome work too. Besides hats, they're a tattoo shop in LA. All right, let's do this. So you'll need a Kubernetes cluster and kubectl configured to communicate with that cluster. I'm using killer coda to simplify that whole process. There's other options, but I've had great success with killer coda. So I guess to get back to the content of today, a Kubernetes cluster can be divided into namespaces. So once you have a namespace that is a default memory limit, and you then try to create a pod with a container that does not specify its own memory limit, the control plane assigns the default memory limit to that container. So Kubernetes assigns a default memory request under certain conditions that are explained later today. Okay. So let's start by creating a namespace so that the resources we create right now are isolated from the rest of our cluster. This is important if you're not using a, a playground like Killer Coda, but for today it doesn't really matter because we're using a playground, but let's create a namespace. Do that using the kubectl create namespace command, and we're gonna call our namespace default mem example. Great. Next, let's uh, populate a YAML with some configuration, and then we'll apply that to our namespace. So let me open, or let me touch a file called memory defaults dot YAML. Let me open that with nano. And so let's declare an API version. We'll set that to v1. Let's declare a kind field. Set that to limit range. And so this manifest is an example of limit range. It specifies a default memory request and a default memory limit. And we're gonna pass a metadata field with some nested subfield called name. And we're gonna set the value to mem limit range. Next, we'll create a field called spec. And this will have some nested information. First, we'll declare a subfield called limits. We'll create a default subfield. The first value, our, our first nested field will be memory, and we'll set that to 512 megabytes. Next, we'll do default request, and we'll set the memory on this to 256 megabytes. And then we'll set the type of this limit to container. Awesome. Let's just make sure everything looks good compared to my reference YAML. And I think it does. But we'll only find out when we run kubectl apply. So let's save this. And then let's create the limit range in our namespace. And so we'll do that using kubectl, oops, kubectl apply dash f, and then our file memory defaults YAML. And we want to specify the namespace. So we'll pass namespace equals default mem example. And I forgot to fully spell out namespace. I just typed 
name, so that's why that didn't work. Let's try it again. It's thinking, it's always a good sign, and our mem limit range was created. Awesome. So now if you create a pod in the default mem example namespace, and any container within that pod does not specify its own values for memory request and memory limit, then the control plane applies default values. That's very convenient. And so those values are a memory request of 256 megabytes and a memory limit of 512 megabytes. So here's an example of a manifest for a pod that has one container, and the one container does not specify a memory request and limit. So let's create a new YAML file called memory defaults, let's spell that right, pod.yaml. Awesome. Let's open that with nano. And then this is going to be pretty brief, but like before, we'll have an API version. Set that to v1. Kind set to pod. Metadata. Spelling is a challenge sometimes. All right. Next, this will have some. Oh. Spelling really is a challenge, okay. This field will have some nested fields. First, we'll have a name. We'll set that to default mem demo. Next, we're gonna have a spec field. Then we'll have a container subfield with some subfields of its own first one name and we'll set this value to default mem demo ctr i'm assuming this is short for container and then an image and this will say engine x our old friend that we had a previous run in where i think i must have sent engine x like 20 times in the span of a couple minutes so we'll try to avoid that today. Let me just verify that this looks good compared to my reference. YAML's looking sweet. So sweet. Okay, cool. One day I'm going to get uh, finger tattoos. One of them will be YAML. The other will be JSON. It'll be super sick. One day when I'm deeper into DevOps. All right. Full DevOps wizard mode. Uh, okay, so we declared our pod. Now let's actually create it. Again, we're going to use kubectl. And we're just going to run apply.f or slash f, very similar to the four. And then we're going to pass our memory defaults pod yaml and we want to create this pod in the namespace called default mem example otherwise it would create in the default namespace which we do not want and again i forgot to spell out namespace so i got an error Awesome, our pod was created. Next, let's get a little info about this pod. So to do that, we'll use kubectl again because that's how we do most of our stuff. So kubectl get pod default mem demo. We want to output this as YAML, so we'll specify that. And then we want to specify the namespace as well. And ours is, did I spell it? Default is one of those weird words that just kind of looks wrong sometimes. Especially when it's split across two lines. The old, yeah. You're not wrong, just not. Yeah. All right. Now let's run this. And again, you can see I forgot to fully spell namespace, but I caught myself because I learned from your mistakes. Okay, 
That looks good. I think I spelled everything correctly. Nice. And so the output is going to show that the pods container has 256 megabyte memory request and a memory limit of 512 megabytes. And the default values are specified by the limit range. So let's scroll up to the top and try to get some sense of all this output, this command line YAML. If only it was uh, highlighted to help it be a little more uh, legible. There's gotta be some kind of plugin for that. I'm sure there is. Okay, leave a comment if you know about a nice uh, YAML syntax highlighting plugin for your uh, command line output with kubectl. That would be like awesome as, awesome as heck. Okay. Um, trying to keep it PG in case there's anyone young watching this. Got to get the children into Kubernetes. <laughs> All right. One of my coworkers, like younger son is like doing JavaScript development. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some younger people getting into container orchestration more power to them so yeah i'll try not to drop f-bombs but <laughs> okay so this looks pretty similar to what we declared in our yaml but now we're trying to look for a containers field okay here it is image yo there we go you can see that the resource limits for memory and request are specified uh, according to the defaults that we imposed on our namespace. So that's pretty clutch. Okay, so that was basically it. Uh, we don't really need this pod anymore, so let's just delete it. And you can see it also uh, pulled from our uh, old friend here, whose name I won't say. All right. So now let's just delete this pod because we don't really need it anymore. Try to spell default correctly. And then we want to specify the namespace as well. In case you might have that same named pod and your default namespace, it would be a bummer if you accidentally deleted that. So that's always a good uh, thing to remember that I believe you can have things named the same in different namespace, namespaces. So that could be a potential danger if you don't remember to specify namespace when you're deleting objects. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna to try to spell example correctly is example. It's not a word that I'm aware of. Let's double check that this is everything that it should be. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh yeah, it looks great. And it's deleted. Okay. So that was an example where we specified nothing. And so the defaults of the namespace were kind of just like absorbed by osmosis into our pod, which was pretty awesome. Pardon the weird uh, biology meets containers uh, analogy. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So what if you specify a container's limit, but not its request? So Let's declare a manifest for a pod that has one container and that container will specify the memory limit, but not a request. So let's create a new file called memory defaults dash pod dash two dot YAML. Okay. Now let's open that with nano. Sorry, I was just, I was having a secondary thought about another video idea, so pardon me. Um, okay, so now let's declare some YAML for this pod with no request limit. So API version, v1, kind pod metadata 
I spelled it correctly. Nice. Name, default, mem, demo, two. You know how canoe has an N, uh, trailing E? It could be like demo. <laughs> canoe, demo. All right. Got to have fun when you're coding too. It can't just be like super serious. I mean, otherwise it's like, why? I mean, like you got to make money, but like you got to have fun too. Try to do both. Okay, so name, we're gonna call the container name default mem demo, demo <laughs> to container. And then we wanna set the image to nginx. You know, you know. And then we wanna do resources. I didn't spell that right. Man, I need that YAML spell check. Oh, it's got to be a thing. I wonder if Helm just simplifies this because you don't have to constantly be retyping the same words. Got to look into that more. Leave a comment if you know. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I knew. Okay. And then finally, pardon the aggressive spacing. We'll specify a memory of one gigabyte. Scaling it up this time from 512. Nice. All right, let's save this YAML. And let's create a pod. And then let's view information about that pod. So our old friend kubectl apply dash f memory. Default pod to YAML. And again, we're going to specify our namespace. And I'm going to spell out the entire word namespace. Default mem example. Awesome. A pod was created. So now let's view that pod info in YAML format. And, uh, see what happens when you only specify the memory and not the request. Okay. So kubectl, get pod, and then we want to pass the pod name, which this time is default mem, what was it again? Default mem example two and then we want it output in yaml format to our terminal despite the lack of syntax highlighting which would be super clutch so if someone knows of such a plugin please let me know all right that looks great and then we got an error okay and I forgot to spell the namespace. At least I'm consistent with where I mess up. Default mem example two not found. Demo two. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So. What happened? We can see that, I mean, I'm gonna skip most of this because it's kind of the same boring stuff, but the resource limits, memory one gigabyte, request one gigabyte. So the memory request is set to match the memory limit. And it was, so the container was not assigned the default memory request value of 256 of this namespace. So that's just kind of a, a behavior that you should be aware of. So if you assume that the, I guess, it'll only absorb the value from the namespace if none of them are specified. But if then the uh, limit is specified, the request will be automatically set to the limit. What happens if you don't specify 
the limit, but do specify the request. You guessed it, we're gonna make some more YAML. <laughs> so let's delete the pod and then create a new YAML file and a new pod. So we'll do cube CTL delete pod default mem demo two and specify the namespace spelling out the entire word default mem example. Nice, our pods deleted. Now let's try the final variant where we specify the request, but not the limit. We touch a new YAML file called memory defaults pod dash three dot YAML. Let's open it with nano. And let's populate it with some YAML. API version v1 kind pod metadata spell the correctly nice name default mem demo demo three spec containers name we're going to set the name to default mem demo three container or ctr for short then we're going to use the nginx image we're going to specify a resources subfield and instead of hard coding the limit uh, we're just going to specify the memory request And we're going to set that to 128, forgot to put quotes, megabytes. Okay, and let's save this YAML. Didn't really double check that I put everything correctly, but we'll find out when I do kubectl apply. Okay, let's do kubectl apply dash F. And then let's pass in the uh, file name to memory defaults pod three yaml and then the namespace i remember to spell out the entire word is default mem example let's go pod was created okay i guess i spelled everything correctly and so now let's view info about the pod like we did the others so i'll do that again with kubectl get pod Default mem demo three, specify YAML output, YAML for the win, and then specify namespace equals default mem example. Awesome, no typos. And then if we scroll to the resources section, which I might have scrolled past unwittingly, my webcam is partially blocking my screen. I mean, that would be up to the top where it was previously, right? Yeah. Containers. Ah, what happened here? So the values were not matched. We can see that the memory limit was set to 512 megabytes despite our request memory being set to 128. So the container is limited to no more than 512 megabytes of memory, which matches the default of our namespace. That's interesting. So if you don't specify the limit, it'll apply the namespace defaults. If you don't specify either, it'll apply the default namespace values. But if you specify the limit and not the range, the range will be, or if you specify the limit and not the request, the request will just be set to the same value as the limit. 
Interesting. Okay. So there's some uh, closing remarks from the Kubernetes documentation team about uh, motivation for default memory limits and requests. And so um, I'll share three of the restrictions that they have regarding resource quota, uh, resource quotas that are imposed on a namespace. So for every pod that runs in a namespace, the pod and each of its containers must have a memory limit. If you specify a memory limit for every container in a pod, Kubernetes can infer the pod level memory limit by adding up the limits for its containers. Okay, that was the first one. So secondly, memory limits apply a resource reservation on the node where the pod in question is scheduled. The total amount of memory reserved for all pods in the namespace must not exceed a specified limit. Okay. Finally, the total amount of memory actually used by all pods in the namespace must also not exceed a specified limit, if that makes sense. When you add a limit range, if any pod in that namespace that includes a container does not specify its own memory limit, the control plane applies the default memory limit to that container, and the pod can be allowed to run in a namespace that is restricted by a memory resource quota. Okay. So let's do a little bit of cleanup. Let's keep CTL. Let's delete our namespace. Actually, let's delete. Yeah, I guess we can just delete our namespace. Interesting if that will delete our pod as well. We'll find out. Delete namespace, default mem, example. It's thinking. Okay. Let's see if the pod is still there. Or is it just totally gone? You know what I mean? kubectl get pods. kubectl get pods. Namespace equals default mem example. Damn. Okay, so it cleans it up. That's nice. That's pretty convenient. Okay. This was a whirlwind tour of configuring default memory requests and limits for a namespace. I'm Alex. This is Code Along with Alex, and thanks for hanging out, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.